Welcome back. Ken Frank was growing in his ministry and counseling career. He then became aware of a need in the community. Women that had difficult histories, desired change, but had nowhere to go and no program to help them transition from a life driven by sex and exploitation to something better. That's when Ked decided that he was going to take action. Learn more about the problem and then start a program to help these women throughout the country. Kind of where we got going was I was working as a, a minister at a church here in Lexington and, and uh, saw a need of some people that were wanting to leave um, a strip club here in town. It was two sisters and um, they were reaching out for help and had nowhere to go and, and as one of the ministers at the church I had a chance to interact with them and, and we offered them the best we could which is basically like a, a meal ticket. Um, an overnight stay at a hotel but really had very few options and that began a series of events with me and my wife where our hearts were just really broken over that issue. We had a chance to serve in a men's recovery facility uh, for a couple of years earlier and so we kind of saw this idea of people living together out in rural locations and and just having a chance to get away and be safe and and uh, heal and recover and so when my best friend bought a 50-acre farm and had an old farmhouse on it. And um, kind of one thing led to another where he started realizing that he had an opportunity to be able to help make a difference in people's lives as well. They allowed us to, to use that property and we renovated it. And, and that began uh, Refuge for Women, putting women that were leaving the adult entertainment industry, dancing, escorting, prostitution, pornography, bringing them to this farm and just allowing them to start over and have a long-term place that they could heal and just get a vision for what the future could look like. One of the first steps in establishing refuge for women was understanding the depth of the problem. When this opportunity came along to interact with these two sisters, um, you know, one of them was eight months pregnant. One of them was um, more of the kind of the, the talker of the two. And, and so I sat with both of them and they'd been working at a strip club just the night before. And so it was one of those situations where I'm sitting there thinking, I can't believe that the one sister, eight months pregnant, was working at a strip club in front of all these guys. And of course, that's just a sickening kind of feeling of just going, something's not right about that. And then the idea of them being sisters, my thought just instantly goes to what kind of environment did they come from that would land two siblings in this kind of place and stuff. And so. As we started getting into it, we started realizing that human trafficking was real. Started realizing that a lot of these women got involved in buying and selling sex when they were teenagers, which anyone under the age of 18 is considered a human trafficking victim if they're exchanging sex for commercial goods. And so we started realizing that a lot of these women were considered human trafficking victims. A lot of them had boyfriends that in reality were, were pimps and they maybe thought they were able to come and go as they please and start realizing they're being controlled a whole lot more than they realized. And so it became an education. And so we started this not really fully understanding a lot of what we were getting into. But as we started educating ourselves and learning from them, as they were teaching us a lot about what was going on behind the scenes, our hearts just got more engaged and more broken and more people um, wanted to get involved and, and wanted to help, which is kind of led us to the expansion of, of, of where we're at today. The, the problem of human trafficking, the government reports, is 20 to 30 million people across the world are victims of, of human trafficking. Um, here in Kentucky, last year alone, we had 266 reported cases of human trafficking. Now, if 266 cases are reported, then you know there's gonna be two, three, four times that amount that aren't even reported. And so it's, it's a big enough a prob problem here in Kentucky that our Attorney General has made it one of his pillars that he wants to be about during his time um, in office. And so it's, it's an issue that I think because of, because of the drug problem, financial issues, because of um, what we find is the number one reason, and that's early childhood trauma sets people up to, you know, um, if they don't get interventions later in life, they become very, very vulnerable to traffickers. And so I think the online community, because of the internet and because of social media and because of the vulnerability of students that are constantly online, uh, not recognizing the predators that can be there, they become targets for this and stuff. So 
it's it's a huge problem across the our state. It's a huge problem across the country um, and and across the world. Once Ked Frank began understanding the problems and challenges, he worked with his wife and many others to create and foster a program that provides these women with a pathway out of some very dark situations. First and foremost, we offer them a safe place. We offer them three meals a day, a bed. Um, we offer them a whole um, lot of loving staff that are going to come around them for a long period of time. And so uh, nine to 12 months is what we give them when they come that they're able to stay with us at absolutely no cost in a faith-filled environment and, and uh, it's a structured program that we're going to walk with them each, each day. We're going to provide um, mental health counseling every single week. We're going to offer them treatment groups um, and by the time they're done at Refuge for Women they're going to have a um, strategic plan on whether it's schooling, whether it's jobs, whether it's housing, Whatever it is that they've identified to us that they want to pursue, we're going to help them do that. Refuge for Women gives women hope, women that may have had few opportunities in the past. The program has helped many, but Ked sees a brighter future with education, prevention, and intervention. Some of the things that we're working towards here in Kentucky, which were kind of the pilot, and then if things go well, we kind of branch that out into our other sites that are opened up as well too. But our biggest priority right now is we want to start doing more prevention work with students. And so uh, we've kind of set a goal to, to be in front of 7,500 students here in Central Kentucky uh, this school year. And so we're working towards that. So we've been in the schools here in the, in the fall. We're hoping to get more in the spring going. And so as we can continue to engage students in this kind of conversation and talk to them about things that we've learned over the last eight years of working with survivors, um, again, our hope is that they'll be able to recognize the signs that they'll hopefully um, not be people who are going to need our services in the future is, is our goal. But then we're also looking at um, students get very passionate about causes. And so we're hoping that maybe even some of these students will want to study this in school and that some of them will eventually become um, advocates and they'll want to, you know, be a voice for people who so desperately need it and stuff. And so, so we'll kind of see where that goes, but our big thing this year is, is working with students. And then here in 2018, what we're wanting to accomplish beyond that, we've been providing the long-term care, we've started uh, doing the prevention more, but our next big thing is we're gonna open up a crisis house. And so our board of directors last year made the decision that we're gonna take one of our houses here that we've been using for the long-term care, we're gonna turn it into a crisis house. And so basically what that means is that um, we're going to be able to bring women in who, you know, are survivors of trafficking or exploitation. Maybe the police pick her up within three, four, five hours. We're going to be able to bring her in. We're going to be able to assess. She's going to be able to be with us for 30 days. And so we'll have anywhere from six to eight women at a time that we're going to be serving in this crisis house. Some of them will eventually transition into our long-term program. Some of them may come for a week and decide that, you know, that they want to go back out or they're going to seek other services and all that. But at, le at least we can give them an, an immediate initial response, which talking to the police is a huge problem for them.